Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here with, with St. Andrew Lutheran. I am Pastor Jenna, and it is so good to be with you all this morning. Thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you to any visitors or guests who are joining us this morning. We are happy to have you even in this um, less traditional worship setting, but we're glad that you're with us today. Um, and I also, I owe you all a big apology. Um, I got really, really, really sick last weekend. And I didn't quite realize just how sick I had been until I started getting better. Finally started to feel a, like a little better by Wednesday morning. And just now, like today, I actually woke up and was like, okay, I feel like I'm back to like 90%. Um, so if you have emailed me, called me, texted me. If you have had questions or anything and you haven't been able to get a hold of me, if I'm not responding to things, um, please know I, I am from the bottom of my heart. I am so, so sorry. Um, I know like I, I was sick. I, there wasn't much I could do about that, but I am sorry that I didn't better communicate what was going on. Um, and then it was just, it was also a really hard, hard week. We um, buried my grandfather yesterday, which was in a beautiful, beautiful funeral, but you know, just when it rains, it pours. Um, so I wanted to share that with you all because I know that there's some emails waiting for attention and phone calls waiting for returns and messages waiting for follow-up. Um, and I just, Feel free to follow up with me and gently remind me about something. And please know that um, I am I am I am feeling much better. And um, God willing, this week will go a little bit more smoothly. Um, we have one more week where we are meeting virtually. I know this is hard. I know this stinks. Hopefully, today's sermon will provide some solace in our grief with all of this. But that means that we will have um, any meetings that are not being rescheduled or postponed will be via um, via Zoom. Our Wednesday Bible study will be via Zoom. Um, all of the links for anything are in the announcements that Anita sends out with the worship bulletin. Okay, so if you need those links, they are in there, and they're you just open the document, and it's nice because you just click on the link, and it'll launch the Zoom meeting for you. Um, we will have office hours though, Monday through Wednesday from 10 until three. So if you need to drop anything off, if there's something you need to pick up, um, if you'd like to schedule, if you'd like to see me, please call or email and schedule a meeting. That would be really helpful. Um, otherwise, one of us will be here. Um, it'll probably be me. Anita took all of last week. Um, and, um, but I, excuse me, um, but that will be our, our game plan. Next Sunday, next Sunday, we are going to worship with a joint worship service at 930 in person. So we will be here in the sanctuary at 930. There is no Sunday school next Sunday because we have um, the annual meeting following the worship. And we are working on having child care during that time. So if you are someone with kiddos and you're like, oh, I want to be there, but my kids need my attention or you know, they're children, that's, that's just what they do. Um, we are working on having child care. So please count on that being available during the annual meeting um, so that if you be able to join us, we greatly appreciate it. We need 50 people for a forum to happen. So it's really important that you either join us in person or you join us virtually okay we'll have a zoom link available soon again I don't have we don't have that information set up yet but it will be available soon it will go out so if you're like I'm really just not comfortable with that you will be able to join us virtually and because we changed our we amended our constitution last year we can do that look at that church stuff sometimes actually uh works works out nicely um if you have any questions, stuff with the budget, because I was on leave, um, th things have just been, it's been like the wild, wild west. 
Um, so if you have questions, comments, concerns, if you're wondering kind of like, hey, usually the stuff is available a little bit earlier, we're just running behind. Um, but we'll get that information. We will get that information available to you before the meeting. Um, it might only be a couple of days, but we'll work very hard to make it available. We'll work very hard to make sure that people who need hard copies get those hard copies. Um, you know, we're we're working our working our behinds off here. Okay, so please, please sh just pour out every bit of grace that you can manage because there's a lot to navigate and a lot to do and we're all having a hard time right now. So just remember to pour out that grace um, that God so freely gives to us and invites us to share with others as we get this sorted and we will. God will, by, by, by God, we will have that annual meeting and it will get done and we won't have to worry about it for a while. Um, <laughs> but with that in mind, I invite you to please turn your hearts and minds to our Lord as we begin with our call to worship. Loving God, we are your people, the body of Christ. We are all in your spirit. All over the world we gather, all different and all beloved. We are all connected, we are all gifted, and we all need each other. In the unity of your love, we worship together with those who are different from us and with our unseen siblings nearby and around the world. With one voice, we praise you, we thank you, we worship you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, and we'll take just a moment of silent reflection before we continue. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and for the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life, live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. So let us pray. Eternal God, quiet the thoughts in our minds that we may hear your voice. Calm the fears in our hearts that we may see your way. Open the doors of our hearts that we may walk in the path of Christ Come to us, Holy Spirit, and transform us by your grace. Amen.
children's message. And this is Schoenfield. And I wanted to tell you about um, Mr. Schoenfield and I have been doing some work around the house lately. And we wanted to hang a picture. But first we needed to measure where the picture was going to go. So Mr. Schoenfield said, would you go bring me my tape measure? So I went and got the tape measure so we could measure. Then we needed to put the nail in the wall. So he said, would you bring me my hammer? So I went and I got the hammer and we put the picture up on the wall. Then he said, oh, there's something loose in the bathroom. Would you go get me my screwdriver? And I said, I already got the hammer and the tape measure. Aren't those good enough? Can't you use those? He said, nope. I need the screwdriver. So I went and got the screwdriver, but guess what? He said, that's not the right screwdriver. That has a Phillips head. You need one with a flat head. So, okay, I went back and I got the one with the flat head. And then his glasses broke. And he said, I need a screwdriver to fix my glasses. And I said, well, I've got this one. And I've got this one, but he said, no, there's a tiny one you need to get. And so I went and got the teeny tiny screwdriver so he could fix the glasses. Now, if you're gonna do some work around the house, this is what I learned, you need lots of different kinds of tools and you need the right tool for the right job. We couldn't have gotten all those jobs done if we didn't have all the different tools. You know what? It's like that in our church, too. Each one of us is a tool, and we can do different things. And we all do our things together to bring God glory. Now, adults can do a lot of different things. They've got gifts for music and gifts for numbers and then making food and mailing cards and listening to each other. But I bet even though you're kids, you have at least one gift that you can use to glorify God in our church. Maybe you play an instrument. Maybe you can sing or help or listening. What are you good at? And how can you use that to help in God's house? That's what we're all about here. God wants to use you. So make sure you're ready to go 
or if someone else asks you to help or needs you for something, remember that you're a tool and you can be a tool for God's glory. Let's say our prayers together. Dear God, thank you for making each one of us different. Thank you for using each one of us. Let us all be tools for your glory. Amen. Thanks. <clears throat>First reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a body part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with the greater honor, are our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? but strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
beloveds of God, grace and peace to you in the name of the embodied Savior. Amen. I have a question. When's the last time that you like really thought about your elbow, right? Probably the last time that you hit it just right so that your entire focus, your entire purpose and being narrowed down to that one painful, overwhelming point, right? In that moment, and for a few afterwards, you are nothing but your elbow. There's nothing else to your entire body but that point of painful contact. And as the pain alleviates enough for the rest of your senses to return to themselves, that focused awareness returns in a flood of overall awareness. You become your whole body again. Your eyes and ears and fingers and stomach and thighs and legs and feet. You become your breath again. These moments where I am so focused on the most painful parts of me distract me from everything else going on around me. There is nothing else but the pain. Only a greater pain could distract me from what would then be a lesser pain, cause me to move on from it. As we heard Mrs. Payne read this morning as God's beloved named and claimed children, we are the members of the body of Christ. We are the fingers and toes, the ears and the teeth, the kneecaps, the livers maybe, yeah. When everything is running smoothly, we don't really think about the whole body all that much, right? It just exists. It's just there. We keep on doing our thing, focusing on what we need to do. However, in our reading from 1 Corinthians today, Paul pulls us back to the center of who we truly are, the body of Christ. We are many members, but one body. We are educators, musicians, engineers, healthcare workers, city employees, grandparents, and aunties, and uncles, and parents. We are school children, and high schoolers, and college students, and in betweeners. Each of us corresponds to an essential part of the body of Christ. Well, some preachers like to take the more comedic, you know, literal route. I even saw a reflection this week uh, titled something like being a nose hair in the body of Christ. And I was like, eh, okay, that's kind of funny, but not the direction I'm going. Paul was using this as an illustration that literally everyone could hold on to as he was making his point about how the the church with a capital C, right? Like when we use church with the lowercase C, we're kind of talking about like the individual churches, like that sort of thing. But when we use the capital C, we're talking about the whole church, every believer of the entire body of Christ, everywhere, all over the entire world. And so Paul needed to help make this make sense for this gro these growing communities of new believers, new converts. These are people who weren't even Jewish. So the idea of one God was just such a wild concept. And he needed to explain how the whole body of Christ works in that context. Not just Pastor Jenna and Bill and Carrie and St. Andrew Lutheran Church in Mundelein, Illinois but how every person belonging to Christ throughout the world belongs to the body of Christ. It's a pretty big body. It's an enormous thing to think of when you stop for a moment. 
when we stop to think about who we might, you know, maybe consider a toe or a nose hair of the body. Those communities that are like, well, yeah, you're technically part of the body, but you're not like an important part of the body. You're a nose hair in the body of Christ. Because when push comes to shove, you don't need a toe or nose hairs to live, right? But when you stub your toe, when the nose hair gets pulled out, still hurts the whole body, doesn't it? Now you're thinking about that. Doesn't matter how tiny or insignificant it is. We're back to the beginning of the sermon again as our whole being focuses in on that point of hurt. It's no wonder that in our hurt and pain, we lash out. Pain hurts, right? And we want it to go away. And right now, oh, right now, my beloveds, we are all hurting so, so, so badly. I keep thinking to, my, to myself, when can I preach about something not related to or working around COVID? When can I just pastor the way that I was taught to pastor, the way that I said yes to going into ministry to do? Our grief and frustration and anger and pain, they just pour out of us, out of every pour in our bodies of the body of Christ streaming into the world as we rage and we cry and we question all of it. We ask, why can't we just go back to normal? Everyone's going to get COVID and wear a vaccine to church. Or I hate Zoom. I don't know how to use it and I can't hear it well and I can't read it on my tablet or my phone or my computer and I feel like my church has been taken away from me and it hurts and I'm sick of it. I need connection to the body of Christ in person. I need to be in the sanctuary with my siblings in Christ as we sing and praise and worship God and nothing else feeds my soul and I resent having this taken from me. I'm so tired of masks and the uncertainty of school and trying to keep my child who's too young to be vaccinated safe while also helping them to get the skills and care they need and when will a vaccine be ready for them so our family can get back to some semblance of normalcy again. The fingers and toes and arms and legs are so tired of holding the body up. The skin is exhausted from trying to hold it all together, hold it all in. Paul writes, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, they clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. The members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all members suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. When one of us hurts, all of us hurts. And our calling as God's beloved children is to find a place where it hurts the most and to focus all our attention on caring for that hurt. 
We do this not because we agree on state COVID protocols or how St. Andrews is handling things or who voted for whom. Being agreement is not the oneness of the body of Christ. That isn't unity. We work together in spite of our differences because it was what we said yes to in our baptisms. It's what we say yes to every time we partake of the body and blood of Christ. It is what is forever indelibly marked on our foreheads in the shape of the cross. Visible to others, but always known by the God who put it there. The embodied God, the God made flesh in Jesus Christ remains in this struggle with us. He knows what it is to feel thirst and hunger and to cry out in pain and agony. He knows and he will never, ever abandon us to that thirst or hunger or pain or agony. There are no easy answers here other than to draw together, to let God hold us together, to be the body of Christ, to be one another in our collective grief and pain and suffering. This is an awful season. It truly, deeply is and we don't know when it might get better again so beloveds while we are many parts we are always and forevermore one body of christ god's body that is the church with a capital c god holds us in his arms and reminds us as many times as we need it that we are loved and that we are gods and that this too shall pass. But until it does, we draw close to those in our community that are hurting the most. We look to where the pain is we focus our attention on that, on caring for, on pouring out grace upon grace upon grace in that spot. So that our beloved sisters and brothers and siblings in Christ are held and loved. And so that you are held and loved too. There is nothing that will change that, nothing that can. God has promised, and we hold on to that promise. Amen.
The spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of the scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace. Hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species at risk of extinction. God of grace. Hear our prayer. As you have taught us today, you desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite, you reunite us into one body. Erase conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, or those living under oppression. Provide generous gifts of healing and comfort, especially for Mary Hansen, May Reeves, Amy Flores, and Harvey Roll. Pour out your blessings upon Dina and Michael as they work with physicians to conceive a child. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries in this congregation as we prepare for the annual meeting. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. God of grace. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these in all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with each other, with those you're worshiping with, drop it in the chat feature on the Zoom. If you, I know we have a couple of folks who've called in, maybe do a phone call, sharing of the piece later, um, a little bit later today. Check in with someone you haven't talked to in a little bit. Send them a note, an email, a text message, a Facebook message, a WhatsApp, however you communicate. Um, I invite you to reach out to folks as we share the love that is the body of Christ with each other. We also, um, as I had mentioned at the beginning of the service in my announcements, um, you know, we're continuing to work on the budget stuff and y'all, we can't, we can't plan for a faithful budget if we don't have some idea of what to expect for the year. So um, if you have been putting off to filling out your, your commitment card, whether you just forget about it, hello, that, that's me, or you forget to drop it off or anything like that, you can just reach out to the church and we can take a verbal commitment. That's okay too, or a commitment in writing. Um, again, it's about helping us to be faithful, faithful to what God is entrusting to us and what we are called to do as St. Andrew Lutheran Church. Um, I know sometimes it can feel a little grubby being like, hey, tell us how much money you're going to give us. But it's about what God is calling us to do so we can be faithful stewards. Um, this congregation is committed to faithful stewardship. 
And so I ask that you please prayerfully consider what God might be calling you and your family or you and your household um, to do in partnership with CDM Dream Lutheran this year. Um, but thank you for all the ways that you do give. We have deeply generous and faithful people in this congregation. And I know, I know that many of you have deeply generous hearts. So thank you so much for that. For all the ways in which we give, let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together as one, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table, wherever yours might be set today. There is place for you and enough for all. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. We'll take a few moments of silent reflection before we continue. Beloveds of God, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I know things are hard. They are hard for each of us. They are hard for our community. 
hard for our state, our nation, and our world. But God goes with us and before us, always, 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 always with us, and sends us with this blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Now go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>